Hey gang, good evening. I guess this is our Saturday night video, the video before Sunday morning. Um, hope you guys are doing good tonight, doing well tonight. Had a great Saturday. Uh, it's good to be home, off the road for a few days and then get back to business next week. Um, this is kind of an impromptu video. Nothing is planned as usual for pretty much all my videos. Straight from the heart. And um, this is something that everyone deals with to a point. Uh, there are people who have processed this better. There are people who have um, walked the road longer. There are people who suck at it pretty much, who aren't good at it at all. And um, I'm someone who has come a long way with it. I have a ways to go because every time something comes up, I have to check myself and say, hey, are you being like Christ? And so I guess I titled this video um, about unforgiveness. And unforgiveness is, is very, very shady because it will cloak itself in avoidance. It'll cloak in self, itself in pseudo passiveness towards the people or, or person that did you wrong, so to speak. And it'll, it'll put you in a sense of denial. And it'll make you think that you've done God's part or you've done your part. And you have, you've done your part your way. You've gone as far as you're going to go with this person or these people. And you're not going to go any further. And you have... Uh, made your peace with them, so to speak. And, but the problem is this, <clears throat> that's not true forgiveness. The Bible says that there's no greater love than someone who would give us life for that person. And the Bible also says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't know if we would ever accept him as his savior and Lord. But because his love for the Father and for the purpose of heaven was so great that he took a chance that we would reject him. When Christians are not in a mode of easily forgiving, it really puts the kibosh, so to speak, on God's purpose in your life. It is a seed and it is a, um, um, a hotbed for animosity, for resentment, for being judgmental. It can, um, it can come up into your life physically through stress, through hair loss, high blood pressure, um, cancer, um, it can cause generational curses because when you don't forgive God's way, you teach your kids to forgive your way. You teach your kids to forgive with strings attached. You teach your kids to forgive the way you want them to forgive. And then they pick up the habit of, of unforgiveness. So tonight I'm kind of I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you guys some clues and keys on how do you know if you are forgiving God's way? It, um, because only God knows if you have forgiven someone the right way. And I'm going to show you a good way to start to where you know that you have forgiven God's way. Um, all right. One of the main things in forgiveness is that you have to admit that you were a sinner. And that if you're a Christian, you know, you're not a sinner anymore. Uh, you have the propensity to sin, but you make the choice not to. And when you admit that you were a sinner, you have to admit that you needed a savior. And that savior is Jesus Christ. And he loved you and died for you before you apologized completely. Y'all, this is coming from the heart of God right now. This is this is good. Not me, this is, but this is good. So, 
if that's the case, the person that you have or people that you have the issue with, you can't wait for their apology. You can't wait for their remorsefulness or their repentfulness. You have to treat them as if they, that it never happened. You have to love them the way Christ loved you before you accepted him as your Lord and Savior. He accepted you first before you even knew who he was. And so that's going to be the main thing. So ask yourself, have I forgiven my husband or my wife or my aunt or my father or my mom or my brother, or my sister, or my boss, the person who murdered someone I loved? Have I, am I waiting for their, for their apology? Am I, am I waiting for them to say, I'm sorry? Am I waiting for them to admit that they're wrong? If you are, then that's not forgiveness. <laughs> that's not godly forgiveness. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. The next thing is, you have to treat them as if they are on your same level. In the sense of, you've got to treat them, well, the Bible says this, thank you, Lord. When you show them love, it's like heaping coals on their heads. They're going to wonder, why are they doing this to me when I know and they know that there's something between us? But see, we are making the choice to make sure that there's nothing between us. Because how we treat them is how God's going to treat us. And how do I prove that? Well, the Bible says, forgive us our debtors as we forgive those who have have debts against us. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. So if we don't treat someone as if they've never sinned it towards us, then God will treat us the same way. It's called sowing and reaping. So if you have, and then the, and the, and so the third thing I would say, if you have unexplained things happening in your family, in your body, in your mind, uh, in your life. You just can't get past certain things. There's no explanation. Uh, unexplained sicknesses, unexplained issues with authority, unexplained issues with your own body, with your spouse. It could be because you're not walking in forgiveness. It could be because you are allowing yourself to dictate how you'll treat someone who has hurt you rather than putting the Bible before you and using the Bible as a filter. This is hard, y'all. I mean, I'm, I'm struggling just saying it because I know there are people in my life, or I guess who are not in my life, or there may be, yeah, yeah, who I'm having to work through this process with. And it's hard because I have to be the bigger person. Or... Even more so, I have to die to my own feelings. I have to trust God and not them. I have to become vulnerable again and again and again. And it's hard. It's hurt. It's scary because no one likes to be hurt. No one likes getting their teeth kicked in every se you know every single day. No one likes the fact that when you put your heart out there, there's a chance that some may step on it and spit on it and run you and run their car over it twice. But the issue is this, Christ did it for us. So search your heart. I don't know who this is going to. I don't know who may see this today or in five years. But my prayer is that the Spirit of God is on this and that whenever you hear this, if there's any, I mean, y'all, read Matthew 18 the whole way through and, and, and listen to what happens to the man who was, who, to the, to the ruler 
who was unforgiving, to the master who was unforgiving, when the king forgave him. Think about what happened to him. The Bible says that, that he didn't forgive someone for a small debt when he was forgiven a big debt. And when the king found out about it, he put him in prison. And the issue is that whether you like it or not, when you think about that person, when you do certain things or the, or the people who, who have offended you, you've got to ask yourself, when I think about them, when they come into my mind, am I in a prison? And you know you're in a prison if you can't be natural with them, if, if you just can't love them from where they are. That's forgiveness. Christ loved us from where we were before he died for us. He had no idea if we would ever turn to him. So tonight I challenge you guys, tomorrow Sunday, um, and the Bible says that if you know that if someone has an ought towards you, has an issue with you, go to them and, and, and don't even give your offering. So go take care of that issue first, then bring your offering to the church. That's how, that's how serious God would rather have people in his church or no, God would rather not have money in the, in his house that is filthy, that is dirty with people who are walking in unforgiveness than have the other. He would rather us go and make amends with people who may even be upset at us and then come back and be a part of the house of God. So, now that you've heard this, the Bible says that you'll be held accountable for what you know. The Bible also says that uh, if you know what to do and don't do it, that is sin for you. <clears throat> so, my prayer is that God will bring people to your memory. He'll bring people to your memory that you who may have an who may have an uh, an, an issue with you. He'll bring people to your memory that you thought you have forgiven them, or you may even know you haven't forgiven them. You don't even care. You're done with them. That you need, that you need to go talk to them and say, hey, you know what? Whatever I did, I'm sorry, and I love you. Please forgive me. Even if you did nothing wrong. B because Christ took on our stripes. Tr Christ took on our, our sin, our shame, even though he was innocent. And go to those people and ask for their forgiveness. You should ask for their forgiveness for not forgiving them. Because we as Christians know better. Whew. Wow. Oh, that's my water. That's my fountain. That's not the, the waterfalls are running. Anyway, y'all, this is getting painful. So I need to go pray and cry and cry and pray because, I mean, you know, y'all, I'm, I'm preaching to myself. There are areas in my life that I got to work on as a grown man, as a, as a husband, a dad, a pastor. There are areas in my life that I have to work on. So I'm sharing with you. I'm becoming vulnerable with you together. I don't know who you are out there, but... You know, we we as Christians have to do better. Jerry Campers II has to do better. And I have to stop trusting in me and trusting in God. Let's pray. <sighs> Lord, forgive us for being unforgiving. Forgive us for being judgmental. Forgive us for being arrogant. Forgive us for being unloving, ungraceful. Because those are the things that we wanted from you and we won't give them to somebody else, oh Lord. Lord, show us where we're wrong. Show, those, show us those dark areas in our lives and give us the fortitude to go and make amends before tomorrow or as soon as possible. We shut the door on Satan 
We shut the door on his ploys. We are no longer in denial. Paul says that he doesn't want us to be ignorant. So now that now, Lord, you're bringing to our memory people who have hurt us. And we, we even if it's a minuscule, a, a, a millimeter, a milligram of unforgiveness, Lord, it's too much. Thank you, Father, for pointing out those people in, in, in my life. And um, I just want to be like you, Father. Amen. All right, gang. Have a great Sunday night, uh, Saturday night. I'm going to go study and prepare for tomorrow. Have a great Sunday morning tomorrow, wherever you guys are, wherever you go to church. Um, if you don't go to church, find, find somewhere to go and, and worship God. All right. Have a good night. Bye-bye.